when you wrote the brilliant album, Harvest, this is crazy to me. Tell me if this is true. After you wrote the album, you said to Nash, I want you to hear the album. You took him out in a rowboat. You played him the album. On one side of the lake you were on was uh, your barn, and you had a big speaker in the barn for the, for, let's say, the right-hand sound. And on the left hand, you had some other structure where you had a speaker. A house. A house. A house. And you're there and you're playing him this masterpiece you've written and you're hearing it and you go, and you yell out to your people, give me more barn. <laughs> there wasn't enough sound coming out of the barn. Well, I just wanted to hear what it was, you know, stereo. I just wanted to hear a biggest, bigger stereo. And, you know, I had these big voice of the theater speakers set up. In, in both buildings and and uh, wires running from one to the other. It was before internet and all that stuff. And, uh, and, and uh, yeah, we were on, in the rowboat, a little aluminum rowboat on the lake that's in front of my house. And also the barn is on the other side of the lake by about maybe, you know, 150 yards. So we're sitting there and it's maybe 300 yards or 250 yards between the barn and the house. And I'm in the middle, more or less, a little bit closer to the house. And we needed more barn. To me, it was like more barn. <laughs> <laughs> when you added the barn and, you, and now you're in a boat and he, you're playing him this. And you play him that. Did you hear how great Crosby's voice was in Alabama in that chorus? It's amazing. Is that Crosby on that? It's Crosby and Stills. Wow. Every song on it is good. A Man Needs a Maid, Old Man, Needle and the Damage Done. When you played that for Graham sitting in that boat, was he just floored? Well, he heard it like, you know, first of all, that overdubs that we did. I think we did words and we did other things too. And I played it. He'd already, we'd already, I, I can't remember if I was playing this for him after we'd done the overdubs. I think I was. Right. I wouldn't be sitting there listening to the whole album in a boat if it wasn't finished. <laughs> right. I can't, I can't waste listens. That's a wasted listen. I can't, uh, listening is like gold. I only listen if I have to, and I only listen for a reason. And when everything's done, I'll listen to it. That's all okay. gas smoke some weed and listen to it while I'm taking a walk. But if I'm working on it, a listen is like gold. Do you ever go back and listen to your old albums? Ever? Only just, just in, in the archives, we're searching for things. That's it. We're looking for now. We got this thing called Fresh Tracks that we're listening for. Yeah. It's a version of the song that shows something that was lost on the search for perfection. And as we were trying to make the finished record, we went by the essence of the record and left it behind. And that was our DMO at the time was to make the perfect record, you know, make a great record. We were overdubbing. I was doing things like that at that time. Um, but now I find these, I find these originals, fresh tracks, first time I ever played it, never anywhere in the archive. Is there an earlier version? Nice. And there's one album of that that's coming out in the next archives that I wanted to tell you about. Yeah, volume three, which has 13 discs in it. Wow. And the last disc is called Summer Songs. And that's a, uh, it's all these original songs that I did, but they're all two years at least before the records came out. 